this video we're going to be finishing up 7.5 exponential functions. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these functions and their graphs so we can have a better understanding of all the properties of these functions. So the main part that we'll be focusing on is um, kind of down here, this paragraph with the bullet points about um, <coughs> the properties of the graphs of exponential functions. So I'm going to be filling in our information um, in our kind of our question side. So let's set of questions. Let's make this our properties. Of exponential functions. So the first property I want to talk about is the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept of an exponential function is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So for example, if we're looking at one of, one of the problems we did yesterday, just flipping this packet over, my y-intercept would be where my graph crosses my y-axis, and we know that's where x is going to always equal 0, so I have 0, comma, and then I just give that y-coordinate, so my y-intercept's at 0, comma, 1. The second thing I'd like to talk about is horizontal asymptotes. Now when we're looking at that given formula for our exponential function, y equals a times b to the x plus c, the horizontal asymptote is always the c value. So we're looking at y equals a times b to the x plus c. The c value right here is the horizontal asymptote. And we'll denote that as a uh, an equation of a line, so we'll have to write y equals 0, or y equals c, I should say. Now, for the lot of ones we'll be dealing with, since these are introductory exponential functions, if there is no value, let's make a note of that. there is no c value, then c equals 0. So let's go back to that graph that we were looking at for the y-intercept. We'll flip our packet over. And let's see, um, we can look at, look at the equation, we'll see that. So when I look at this equation, y equals 2 to the x, is there a plus a c value or a minus a c value? There isn't. So we can see that we can kind of think of it as being an implied plus zero, and then that's our c value. So our horizontal asymptote would be y equals zero. And the way those are graphed, and it's going to be difficult to show on this, but it's a dotted line at that, at that point. So I'm putting a dotted line over my y-axis, 
like so. So you'd graph the asymptote like that. And what the asymptote is, it's an imaginary line that this graph will forever be approaching, but never touching. So as these values get smaller and smaller, they will get closer and closer to zero, but they will never get quite to zero. So we'll graph that imaginary line at y equals zero. This is the line y equals zero right there. We want to make sure it's dotted. Or dashed, I should say. So we'll have the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. That's this horizontal line and then it's always going to be dashed. Okay. Next we'll want to talk about domain. Domain's pretty straightforward for these kind of functions. And the domain for exponential function will always be all real numbers. So anytime you ask for the domain, um, any x value is okay to put it plug in. So that means that we can have all real numbers as our domain. So when we flip over and look at this value, so the domain is, if I'm just thinking about this graph as being a left to right, I don't care about the y values, just the x values, there's never any like stopping point for my x values. My x values can go left and right without any issues, so that's why the domain would be all real numbers. Now the range <coughs> is very much related to the asymptote. And this information right here, this line right here, explains the range. It lies above the asymptote. So with the range is it's where is the graph lying? Is it lying above the asymptote or below the asymptote? So if it's lying above the asymptote, then we'll say that the range is y is greater than c, c coming from our asymptote value, and if it lies below the asymptote, we'll state that the range is y is less than c. So let's look at our <coughs> example graph that we've been flipping to. And so when we're looking at this graph right here on A, well our graph is above the asymptote, and if we're thinking about just the y values, all these y values are greater than zero. Every single y value is above the asymptote, so we can say that our range is y is greater than zero. Okay. 
Now this end behavior idea that we want to talk about has to do with <coughs> what is the x doing as it approaches the asymptote? Is the x increasing as it approaches the asymptote or is the x decreasing as it approaches the asymptote? So our end behavior will deal with that idea. And for this one, so if I follow approaching the asymptote, my x values are getting less. So I will say that x decreases as the graph approaches the asymptote. x decreases as the graph approaches the asymptote, which is fairly clear when we're looking at the graph. As I'm approaching the asymptote, this dashed line right here, and I try to approach it, we see that it's decreasing. Okay, so let's try um, filling out all this information on our next on B. So let's think about our horizontal asymptote first. Well, if I look at my equation, what is this value, this plus something that's not written right here? Well, we can write in a plus zero. So there's my C value. And we know the horizontal asymptote is going to be Y is equal to zero. And so we can draw on that dashed line right over our X axis. And there's our horizontal asymptote. Next, we can look at our domain. Let's do the y-intercept first. Our y-intercept, which is where we're crossing that y-axis, and it's that point right there. We know that's 0. We can use the table as well, 0, comma, 1. Our domain will always be all real numbers. So that one's pretty easy. Our range, we're just going to use the asymptote value 0. And is y above greater than 0? Or is y below less than 0? Well, our graph is above, so we can say y is greater than 0. And our end behavior, x is increasing, the values of x, if you think just the x values, is increasing as the graph approaches the asymptote. So we're going to do a couple more examples. This time we're going to add a little bit more to this. Uh, I don't want to do y equals 10 to the x. So let's do y equals negative 2 times two-thirds to the x. So I can't stress enough that if you take the time to write these things out, if you do more writing, um, it can make the math or just make less mistakes occur. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. So this is our y. So we're going to go y equals negative 2 times 2 thirds raised to the negative 2. Now I'm going to flip that 
fraction so that I have is equal to negative 2 times 3 halves to the second power. And now we'll square that fraction. That's going to be 3 halves times 3 halves equals negative 2 times 9 fourths. And then when I multiply these together, negative 2 times 9 fourths will be negative 18 over 4. Sorry, kind of going into the graph. And then when we simplify that, negative 18 four over 4 is negative 9 over So I've simplified negative 18 over 4 and put it right there, negative 9 over 2. Now let's do this for our next problem. For our next value, y is equal to negative 2 times 2 thirds to the negative 1. plugging in that negative 1 value. So that would equal to, I'm just going to flip the 2 thirds, that's all the negative 1 does, so I have negative 2 times 3 halves. We'll multiply these together and we get negative 2, we'll get negative 3. The twos can cancel each other, and that'd be negative one times three is negative three. So we have negative three right there. Now we'll plug in the zero y is equal to negative 2 times 2 thirds to our 0. 2 thirds to the 0 is 1, so we get equals negative 2 times 1 is equal to negative 2. Plugging in 1, we get y is equal to negative 2 times 2 thirds to the 1 power. 2 thirds to the 1 power is 2 thirds, so negative 2 times 2 thirds is equal to negative 4 over 3. <coughs> now we'll plug, oh, negative 4 over 3. Now we'll plug 2 in, and we have y is equal to negative 2 times 2 thirds raised to the second power is equal to negative 2 times squaring that would be 4 ninths which would equal negative 8 over 9 and we get negative 8 over 9 now again when you're graphing these you'll be using Alex and remember you will want to use that button ability that button where you type in each point that's the most accurate way to graph these we're just going to do our best by trying by hand So I'll have negative 2 comma negative 9 halves. So we'll go negative 2, negative 9 halves is about negative 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, so right around here. Negative 1, negative 3, that one's easy. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. 0, negative 2. 1, negative 4 thirds, so negative 1 and a third, so when we're at 1, we're at negative 1 and a third. And then 2 comma negative 8 ninths, so that's really close to the negative 1, but not quite. Now we'll connect our dots. And 
let's answer these uh, questions along the bottom. Our horizontal asymptote is found at that C value. We have no C value, so we know that there's a hidden plus zero. So there's our C value. So we'll say our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, and we'll graph that dashed line over our x-axis. If you need, you can like scribble it real big so you can make sure you see that it's a dashed line right there. I'm trying to emphasize it when it's over the x-axis. And then our y-intercept, where are we crossing the y-axis? Well, we're crossing the y-axis right here at this point. So that would be our, where our x is 0, neg 0 comma negative 2. Our domain, always the easy part, all real numbers. Our range, where is the graph located compared to the asymptote? Well, it's below the asymptote, and we know our asymptote is 0. And since we are below, we will say y is less than 0. And our end behavior, we're talking about what is x doing as it approaches the asymptote. Well, my x values, as I get closer to this asymptote, just the x values themselves, my x values are increasing as I approach the asymptote. So this video has gotten kind of long pretty quick, so I'm only going to stop here and just do one example for us today. Um, a lot of definitions, a lot of um, way, uh, a lot of reading of the graph that we have to be able to do. Um, but thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, remember to bring them to class on Monday. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.